Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is July 18th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm going to talk about some predicted weather patterns for the United States, primarily a weather pattern that appears to be settling in that is enhancing heat and related extreme con conditions in the West and stormier and somewhat cooler conditions in the East. And from this satellite shot today, we can see a large trough dipping down over the East associated with these big swirling masses of clouds, these thunderstorms, and a general outburst of, of thunderstorms across the central through the southeastern U.S. And over the west, we can see clearer skies, although some thunderstorms are popping up with a bit of a monsoonal flow over Arizona and New Mexico. But for the most part, largely clear and dry and hot. And if you look close, you can see the smoke plumes from large wildfires burning along the U.S. west coast in association with much warmer than normal temperatures. Now, one extreme weather event yesterday in association, in association with this pattern was captured by Max Guliani, and this event included some water spouts that occurred in New York Harbor in association with a number of strong storms that rolled through the region. And these are the kinds of events that we are seeing across the East at this time. Now, the type of pattern that's settling in and, and that is predicted through the next two weeks is what is known as a dipole weather pattern. And this dipole is including, as we said before, very warm temperatures, much above normal temperatures across the U.S. West, and stormier and cooler temperatures across the U.S. East. Now, this is a NOAA 8 to 14 day outlook, but we already see this weather pattern settling in. Now I'm going to look at some of the synoptic features that are related to this pattern and talk about why this pattern is likely to persist for a relatively long period of time. Now looking at the jet stream right now what we see and this is a predicted jet stream for July 21st in the GFS model and as you can see there's a large upper level high pressure system over the southwest with a deep trough running down through the east. And in addition, you see a high amplitude jet stream feature in relationship to various ridging features in the west as well, and low pressure systems related to a series of troughs running in through the east and through Hudson Bay and through parts of Canada. Now, these features are driven by various different weather features and energy related features at the Earth's surface. And these energy related features are in some respects, well, in some respects have a climate change related signal. And we're gonna talk about this. Well, the first signal I wanna talk about is Pacific Ocean warming. Now, according to recent scientific studies, Arctic sea ice loss has, has creates a signal in the climate models in which the Pacific Ocean responds in such a way that you have increased warming throughout the Pacific. And during recent years, we've seen very warm sea surface temperatures, particularly in the Northeast Pacific. And of course, this is an anomaly map showing departures from normal. And what this is showing is that these warm sea surface temperatures at the surface are pervasive. And these warm sea surface temperatures help to influence ridge patterns across the US West. Now, it provides impetus for increased ridge patterns, increased heat across the US West, both at the sea surface and over the land surface, and increasing high amplitude jet stream waves and strong ridge patterns as well. Now, where you have a strong ridge in the jet stream and, and ridge pattern associated with heat, 
on the front side of the ridge, you tend to generate a trough. But there are also some ocean influences as well that are related to climate change that I like to talk about in association with the eastern ridge, uh, I'm sorry, the eastern trough pattern. Now, recently, Greenland melt has generated a cool pool signal in the North Atlantic, and this cool pool has an influence on local weather and has tended to cool off sea surfaces near Greenland and in Baffin Bay. And during recent months, we have seen cooler than normal surfaces in Hudson Bay as well. Now, all these ocean zones tend to help to exaggerate the trough patterns that occur over the U.S. East. So on one side of the continent, you have warmer than normal sea surface temperatures exaggerating ridge patterns, providing more impetus for, for ridge patterns. You have receding sea ice that is also helping to draw ridge patterns further north and to enhance their strength. And on the other side of the continent, you have cooler than normal sea surface temperatures, which are helping to exaggerate trough patterns. Now, it doesn't mean that there's always going to be a trough in the east, there's always going to be a ridge in the west, but, but it creates a tendency, it creates an underlying set of features that create a prevailing pattern. And these underlying features, in a number of respects, have associations with human-caused climate change. Now, just going back to the overall weather forecast trends, what we can expect, as I said before, are warmer to much warmer than normal temperatures in the U.S. West. This should help to increase drought prevalency, wildfire risk, and extreme heat risk, including the risk of heat waves, and somewhat cooler than normal temperatures along with more severe weather for the U.S. East. And I'm going to take a look at NOAA's precipitation forecast. So you can see this is a seven-day precipitation forecast. And you can see the influence of this ridge trough pattern with much drier conditions in the west and much wetter conditions in the east with the potential for rather severe rainfall running from Florida through the U.S. east coast and just offshore with some pretty intense storm, local storm potentials spotted throughout. I'm also going to look at some of the anomaly pattern predictions for the U.S. over the next 10 days. I'm just going to go ahead and run this model. Again, this is an anomaly map. And what we see are bursts of heat in the West, bursts of much higher than normal temperatures in the West, and cooler bursts in the East also associated with a more stormy pattern. So just note how the temperatures kind of flare out West and tend to extend further and further north as we continue to run the model. And to, as we get toward the middle of the model, you'll note that these cooler pulses just kind of roll through and the warmer pulses tend to fill in through Alaska and the Pacific Northwest and up into the Arctic here. And note that these Warm pulses as we get closer to the end of the model run get quite intense through Western Canada and along the U.S. West Coast here. And well into Alaska as, as well. So it's a pretty intense dipole pattern predicted. And it's something that apparently, according to NOAA's weather predict predictions, is going to be a feature of U.S. weather for at least the next two weeks. So something to keep an eye on. Thank you for joining me, and I look forward to chatting with you soon.